Hi, my name is Zoran Horvat. In this video, we will talk about getting started with DDD, the domain driven design. If you are new to DDD and want to get started from somewhere, or if you are already practicing DDD but you feel that something is off there, let me try to shed some light on the beginning, the first initial steps that you might want to make before constructing a DDD model and application. If you like what you learn here, you can subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to tick the bell so that you receive notifications when new videos are uploaded. Also, if you want to learn more from my videos, you can visit me on Plural site where I have published a dozen of video courses, or at Udemy where I also have a couple of video courses published, and you can learn more there. So, Let's get to the question of designing the domain model for the DDD project. But let me tell you a secret. Long before you can start thinking of values entities, aggregates, let alone bounded contexts, you need to make a clean domain model to start with. That is what I will show you in this video. So, this video will not even get to the point of identifying aggregates, for example, because there is that first step that precedes it. The first step has to do with another element which I haven't mentioned so far, which is a vital element of DDD, the ubiquitous language. You must build a shared language of terms that are specific to that domain you are modeling, and you must build that language together with your customers, with domain experts. And let me give you an example domain. Like, suppose that we are modeling a car registration shop, nothing special. And you talk to the customers, to domain experts. Okay, th that is a better term, domain experts, with somebody who knows that domain. And you start building the language. So, make that an explicit element in your project. I will just make a text file here to, to list the terms, but you must access the problem of identifying domain terms, the language, the ubiquitous language, very seriously, make it an explicit document and write everything down. Why is this important? There is that old habit of programmers who are all smart people to make an artificial mapping between the domain and their model in code, because code is something else. And so the customer says, we have a box, and you say, oh, we have a container for items. It has a, an attribute which defines its shape, and shape is rectangular. No, it is a box. And so if customer says a box, you should have a class in your own programmatic domain, which is called a box. It might have some attributes that are more mathematical, like shape. That, that is not a crime, but let that domain model be called a box. And that is ubiquitous language. Both ends, the domain expert and the programmer who implements the domain will speak in same terms. And so we speak to the domain expert. They say, we are doing the car registration. We are car registration shop. All right, shop. Those are the guys who pay us to work. That We don't have to write that down. But car registration. And then you start talking in more depth and you figure out that when they say car, they actually speak of vehicles. So that is the proper domain term, a vehicle, because not all vehicles are cars. And when speaking of registration, what do they do? It has more to do with licenses. So we will focus on issuing licenses for vehicles. And then we talk to the domain expert about what that license represents. It represents many things. Let me catch one phrase they mentioned. The allowed persons count. How many people can be put into the vehicle? And then you ask, what is that? How do you calculate that? How do you know how many people can get into a car? 
But it all has to do with seeds. So they speak about seeds. And you say, okay, what, what seeds? The seeds have seating capacity. You see, I'm writing a text file. I'm not writing code yet. I'm just documenting the domain as spoken about by the domain expert. That is building the ubiquitous language. I, the programmer, I'm trying to speak the same language as my domain expert does. And then we go on and we say, okay, what is the seat capacity? Well, that depends, they say. The driver seat, okay, it has capacity one. Then there are passenger seats. There are different kinds of those. Okay, what kinds do exist, you ask? They say, there is that common bucket seat with one, capacity one, only one person can sit. There are bench seats there also. And that is where things become funny. And you see that nobody's smiling, so you wonder what's funny about them. Well, the capacity. It can be two. There can be a bench seat for two persons, but there can also be a two plus one uh, bench seat. And so, so you say, so it is two or three. They say, no, no, it's two or two plus one. So what's the difference? Well, that plus one might not have the seat belt. It depends on the car. Oh, the seat belts. Wait, wait a minute. There is a concept of a seat belt. And so you say, so what's the difference? We, all right, we do or do not have a seat belt on a plus one seat in the middle of the bench. Who cares? No, they care. It depends where the car registration shop is opened. In some states, it doesn't matter. Because, so we get back to the, the allowed person's count, which is a, an attribute of the license. It's just the total seat's capacity, so it doesn't matter. But in some states, it does matter. You cannot register a car above the total number of seat belts because every person in a car must have a seat belt. So you figure out that there are two kinds of legislations. In one, you would just sum up the capacity of seats in a car. In the other legislation, you would cap that with total number of seat belts. So you could have a seating capacity of five, but only four seat belts, then the capacity is four. And now we have got a pretty good picture of what the domain is. And we can start programming only after this. So we start programming and I will, look, I will copy all those sentences, all those terms, the ubiquitous language, right into the code as comments for now. But look, every single line here will be a type or at least a method. All these elements must exist with the same words used. That is the ubiquitous language you are building. And so, look here. The vehicle. There will be a class for the vehicle. Observe that I am not pressing myself with the question of aggregates, entities and value objects yet. I don't have to. The first element in building the domain, the DDD style domain model, is for one thing to have a rich, deep model. Don't make an anemic model. You know what anemic model is. It's been long ago since, I guess, programmers stopped writing anemic models. But uh, many programmers turned to a different practice to hide an effectively anemic model behind some facades, services, things like that. It's not solving the problem. What you need in any application is a rich, deep domain model. And then if you want to practice DDD, start from the ubiquitous language and represent all elements with programmatic elements that have the same name. Look, seats. There will be seats in a vehicle, but there are many kinds of seats, so it will be an abstraction. An abstraction, an interface here, which lets us know its seating capacity and the number of seat belts. That is what the domain expert was talking about. So these are the services we need. We can deal with the details later. 
there will be different kinds of seeds, all right, they will be modeled in different ways. We can postpone that. We have also addressed the question of seed belts. So we move on to the license. At this moment, we are only concerned with knowing the maximum number of persons in, in the vehicle. So let's model that. How do we calculate that? How do we create the license instance? That is this set of rules that is driven by the legislation, by the laws, which we must implement. So, let me introduce a separate class which represents the specification of the licensing rules so that we can subdue the car, the vehicle, to that specification and get the details of the license out. So the seat capacity rule will be an abstraction because we already know of two kinds of it. And the specification will construct a license, given the vehicle again. As of now, it will only calculate the number of persons, allowed persons, by delegating to the rule. And that dismisses this request. There are two requests left, and we will implement them by introducing two distinct classes. So again, look, there was a sentence told by the domain expert. There is the total seats capacity as a thing. So there is a class for that specific thing. It just iterates the seats in a vehicle and sums their capacities up. That's it. But there is another variant that is capping the existing capacity, seating capacity, by the number of seat belts. To calculate maximum number of persons by the number of seat belts means to take the smaller of the two counts. One count is whatever the baseline rule says, and the other count is the sum of counts of seat belts installed on the seats. That is how it works. That is what the domain expert explained to us. And now observe, this is the complete seating capacity rules calculation. And this is all the code that stands in one-to-one -one relationship with what the domain expert was telling. There is no that artificial mapping between the domain language, the language spoken at, at the shop where the software will be used, and the language you used to name your classes, interfaces, and methods. There's no mapping. And so if we wanted to use this domain, there would be a vehicle, there would be a configuration of rules pulled out from, I don't know, from config, from database, anywhere. That is how the application will start up. So there will be two rules for the seating capacity, just seats rule, and the one that is constraining it with the number of seat belts. And so if we wanted to register a car, there would be a licensing specification also prepared when the application starts that is filled with the just seats rule in one part of the country. And we would issue a license for the car by calling the apply to method on that spec in a different state where the different law is in effect. There would be a different setup for the licensing specification, but exactly the same process of issuing a license for the car. So we have a rich, detailed domain model for this small part of that supposedly larger domain. And now we can start thinking about aggregates and values and entities. So you will recognize the vehicle to be one entity, the seat. It could be a value because it is a very simple model here. We don't need seat as a separate entity because there's, there's no business-related behavior of the seats. And so I think that there will be one aggregate that uh, consists of the car and the, the seats that belong, a collection of seats that belong to that car. So there it is. We are doing some DDD-style modeling. You can go on from this point 
All this we are talking about is probably one bounded context. You cannot make a mistake if you say any term, any of these terms, there will be only one meaning of that. So that is an indication that we are still within uh, one bounded context where all the terms have unique meanings. If we went to the finance department, the vehicle would probably have nothing to do with seats there, but probably with the owner or uh, the one who is paying the bill or something like that. So that would probably be a different bounded context and the words used there could be the same as words used here, but have a different meaning. That is also uh, that is a primary indication that we are talking about a different part of the domain. But here it is. I have done quite a lot of work without stepping into the domain-driven design other than defining the ubiquitous language. So if you want one takeaway from this video, then it is this. You want to start with DDD, start with the language. Talk to the domain expert, figure out how they speak about the domain, write it down and make sure that your domain, your domain model is speaking in the same terms. When you succeed in that, the doors will be wide open for you to apply the other practices of DDD. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe to my channel, watch my other videos and Follow me on Plural Site and Udemy. Subscribe to my video courses when, where there is much more materials than in these short videos. Thank you for watching and see you soon.